had a performance review at work today a performance review you know what one of those things are right they're usually things that only get sprung upon you when you're probably not doing the greatest or you have some things to improve on. Or if you work for a company that has those kind of things airtight and watertight, they're usually a kind of thing to keep everybody um, kind of on their toes to make sure people are performing le- at, the, at the right level, to make sure people are kind of pushing each other, which essentially kind of, you know, it's a bit of a... Um, it's a bit of a win-win for the company because if somebody crumbles and they're not good enough for the role or they don't step up then you could just put them out to pasture if they respond well to the performance review then you've got somebody that's hungry and ready to kind of you know sink their teeth into things won't take it for granted anymore it's going to be attacking a day and obviously it's going to be helping you as a business generate you more income uh, or whatever you know just help you in terms of the day-to-day running of the thing so it's kind of a win-win in that regard so one way it kind of like sorts out the wheat from the chaff and the other day it kind of um what do you call it it kind of also allows you to have the opportunity to basically give someone a chance to prove their worth uh, so you see the sink or swim in those situations and mine was funny because for the most part i think a good kind of word of caution is like if your performance review starts off with someone giving you um compliments like you know un- unnecessarily glowing compliments that have nothing to do with the actual role that you do it's usually a sign that, that the performance review won't be great it won't be on your it won't be what you think it's gonna be but luckily for me um i am pretty self-aware i'd say i'm probably one of the most self self-aware people that i've that i know or that i've ever come across in life i think for the most part anything about me that even you the viewer you the listener might think is a a bit of a negative in terms of my personality or things that you've heard or things that you've seen I most likely have written myself to pieces about it a million times over like I legitimately legitimately know Wagwan with me at all times I'm not ever shocked about the things people say I'm not ever taken aback even if I pretend I am I definitely know it's definitely things that I'm aware of that I kind of want to address but I'm just being lazy I'm not following through um it's maybe not on my priority list whatever it may be but there's no chance that I don't know about it it's impossible I always know so with this performance review I kind of was already aware of what was going to be said um again it's nothing crazy it's nothing that's going to really um you know kind of really um cost me to basically lose employment that's not going to happen anytime soon because obviously you know i'm somebody that can address those things pretty quickly they're things that can be actioned very fast but the problem with being self-aware is that if you're that self-aware the question needs to be asked why don't you just do the things that you know someone doesn't like and then that kind of brings up some things that you probably don't want to say out loud which is you know i'm still slowly but surely coming to grips and coming to the idea or coming to the point in my life where i'm starting to respect jobs it's a weird thing to say this right but i think anybody that's kind of trying to pursue a creative endeavor anybody that's trying to maybe set up their own business anybody who has aspirations even to be rich and famous whatever it may be i'm sure you've all had the same thing where it's very difficult to respect your job that you have like the actual job that pays you monday to friday or however long you work it can be a really hard thing to kind of switch in your brain i remember for a long time i had battled with it and then i remember thinking maybe i'm not too bad when i met other people who are also kind of trying to pursue their own careers in the arts in the creative fields or whatever else they're trying to do and i remember meeting one person in particular who was very against even having a full-time job like it didn't make sense to that person they would just do the thing what they oh yeah, the thing that they would do is that they'd work for a set man period of time so if it was like six months four months not do anything else save up and then use that money for that four months then allow them to do what they want to do for the next six and then hope that six months is like a uh, it's like a trial it's like okay it's like a make or break like it's like a football trial you hope like okay cool i'm gonna try go to all the trials i can in the summer and then bang hopefully one of them bangs one of them lands i get a record i get my sorry my football contract and i can go pro and then quit my job but obviously that's a bit of a nutty thing because you're not you know you're basically only attacking you're basically only basically yeah you're basically only attacking the day or trying to secure your dreams or trying to achieve your dreams sorry within a six month window so you're giving yourself way less time than most people would because obviously you need way more than six months maybe more than 12 it could take a lifetime you never know how long it could take or it can never happen which is also another question another thing that people don't like talking about but hey let's just stick to the topic so i've never really been that someone i've kind of always struggled with that and um i think as i've gone older as i've become more mature as i've just gone through more things and i've seen the actual reality of life i think is that sometimes as a kid you definitely overrate your youth you definitely 
you definitely ride on the back of your youth too much. We're kind of seeing it a bit with academics, um, what he's going through at the moment with um, all these OGs sort of like kicking him when he's down because of that comment that he made about, you know, old, about veterans and hip hop being old and dusty. And the general point he was basically making was that he feels like the, why are the pioneers of hip hop, the ones that found this such an amazing um, genre that's essentially taken over the entire world? Why aren't they rich and famous also? Or why aren't these people, um, able to sort of um you know give game to the younger kids coming up or why don't they have labels where they basically have all these young kids in their kind of roster of artists and why is it all you know outside people the you know the white man whatever maybe all these kind of questions right but i guess him using dusty was something that kind of set people off but in general that's definitely one of those sort of like somebody overrating their youth even though he's not that young he's only 31 um it's still somebody who he's at you know he's amassed or he's attained a level of success very quickly in a very short space of time he's attained a lot of money in that short space of time and he's probably thinking to himself this is so easy why weren't the people who pioneered this stuff why weren't the people like why hasn't why didn't hot 97 do this before me why didn't the breakfast club do this before me so he's probably thinking those sort of things and kind of um in some ways um what's this what's the thing called he's in some ways uh he just can't wrap his head around it, right? And I guess I'm just general. I'm just thinking in terms of this, youth sometimes can make you think. Youth can, youth can sometimes make you feel invincible, like you've got all the time in the world or that your thing's going to happen tomorrow. And sometimes it just ha doesn't happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter how much effort you put in. It just doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. Um, that's just the way life is. And obviously persistence plays a lot, plays a big role in this or maybe you know pursuing something that you actually do care about because it won't be work because you just wake up every day and do it because you love doing it anyway. But regardless, those are the things that I kind of have to wrestle with over time. And thankfully, thankfully, I got to that stage of maturity where I was able to kind of respect jobs, but I still got little things in me that kind of show up day to day, which is probably what my performance, which definitely what my performance review kind of illustrated. So this is just a message to the kids coming up nowadays, especially the ones who are trying to make it, especially the ones who are on TikTok, especially because that kind of platform, because it's new, the algorithms and the, and the stats behind it, the views are a little bit shaky. I'm not really too sure if all that stuff is real, but because TikTok are trying to basically um, corner one side of the internet or social media, they're obviously going to be, um, making sure the views and the engagement of the things that they put out is somewhat is somewhat attractive to up and coming content creators so they know that they can easily go from being a no one to being someone quite well known on TikTok and I think all that stuff can get your head and make you think why aren't I why aren't I also writing for Vogue why aren't I also on the front flipping row of this fashion show why don't, don't I why haven't I got the ability to shoot this campaign or go and speak at this keynote thing or whatever it may be and I think sometimes in life you have to realize that things just take different sets of time for some people. Some people can make it in a year. Some people it takes 10 years, some people it takes 15. But if you're really pursuing something you want to do, it shouldn't matter how long it takes as long as you're able to do the thing that you enjoy on a daily, weekly, whatever you basis. But also a really vital part of it, component of it is having a job. Being able to support yourself and being able to support your dreams, right? Being able to kind of, um, you know, buy equipment like I've been able to do. Um, being able to, you know, buy flipping, what's, your, what's that called? Um, being able to sign up for a uh, a place to host your videos, to host your podcast, whatever the things that I do. Being able to pay for studio time, uh, to rent a studio, to buy a studio, whatever it may be, all those things that allow you to basically do the thing that you actually like doing, the thing that you actually are passionate about doing, it all comes from having a job. So you have to get to a level where you respect the job to the point where you're giving your all within those hours that they give you. Um, and that's the that's the bare minimum. There's nothing else that can cut it. Anything else like, oh, you're moaning, you're coming in late because you're tired, no one cares they have paid for your time nine to six turn up on time smile do a great job be personable be fun to be around you know light up the room whatever it may be that you want to do and then when you leave you leave but actually in that time do it because i know i didn't do it in the past before and i've you know and it really did kind of bite me in the bum and i think the one the couple of times i did do it and was really a high performer i can only say i got rewarded for it like for instance this one job i had in particular um you know i kind of got on really well with the manager there and she kind of took a bit of a shining to me i guess maybe maybe before i was good at what i did and since i've left that place which i left you know voluntarily because i wanted to go and pursue other things and i had a kind of an offer from another company that i went to that you know eventually in four months ended up going under but that's a story for another day but that place that i left the manager liked me so much that any time i'd you know 
getting contact for a reference. Um, anytime there's an opportunity to speak highly of me through other people that she probably didn't even know uh, that related it back to me, she'd do it. And even now recently, you know, putting in touch with other people to kind of speak about an, another thing that's happening and just be kind of, you know, uh, a kind of um, somebody that can maybe lend some advice or insight on some things. It goes a, a long way to show that if you do a good job, it doesn't matter how small the role is, how lowly you think the position is, it does sometimes come back now that it cannot, no, it's not always going to come back in the like again. There's not there's been no monetary gain from this sort of stuff. There's been no jobs from it, but it's just been good to know that there's somebody out there who's championing you. With whilst you're just asleep, whilst you're minding your business, whilst you're going about your everyday, there's somebody out there that's saying, "Oh, and when they hear your name, like, oh yeah, that person's sick. That person did this. That person that, and just stamps you. And you don't know how where that goes and where that carries. You have no idea where that's going to lead. But it's just good to have that out there in the atmosphere. Why would you want to have the opposite? Oh, that guy's lazy he she did this or anyway, you don't want that so i think for the most part i think you know most more people need to do that and start respecting jobs i think for the most part creative people hide the fact that they have real jobs i don't i say i have one i remember um i saw a thingy what i see i think i remember seeing a stand-up comedian i forgot who it was some stand-up comedian um, or maybe it was a, a book about stand-up comedy. Somebody said in a book, and I don't know what the reason was, so if anybody knows, please do um, email me or reply in the comments or something. But I remember hearing a comedian or somebody involved in uh, the comedy industry saying something along the lines of, don't tell the audience or don't tell jokes that make it known that you've got a job. Like, just perform. Because I guess the idea behind it may be against my own thinking about, I don't know, anything else i haven't read anything else but i think my own thinking behind it would be maybe when you're on stage you kind of want people to be transported away from their daily struggles or from their daily kind of work life so you kind of avoid work related jokes or making it known that you have a nine to five because you want the person that's watching in the audience to be kind of you know transported into your world and not have that world be any reflective of their kind of day to day that they don't like so you talk about the other things outside of it you know whether it's going on holiday whether it's airports whether it's in shops whatever weekly shop whatever it may be relationships but try not to do jobs i think that's what i remember hearing people someone saying but i think it's a bit idiotic because you know let's be honest like what was somebody my age um, at my stage of life with a YouTube channel with, with, or with the podcast that's like as small as mine be doing outside of this if I wasn't working and I mean it doesn't make sense it's pretty obvious that I have a job so why would I lie and I don't have fucking um, why would I obscure the truth and I don't have flipping rich parents either so I mean I can't do a Peggy Groom just move to Berlin and hang out you know what I mean that, that's not gonna happen so it just doesn't make any sense but I guess you know in creative life you have to kind of do this whole like um fake it till you make it thing in it but yeah i'm not really on that kind of vibe you know what i mean i would rather just like try to make it so yeah that was basically my thinking on that one that i thought maybe some of you guys may take some value from if not disregard it and just keep doing what you're doing because i'm sure some of you guys are pretty much